It's a funny story because I was Penn State and I was a, a journalism major and I signed up for an EZA, which is a film class, and the computer made a mistake, signed me up for a production class, five people in the class, and you had to make a movie, and it was too late to change. So I took the class, I made a movie, and it was very easy. And I went to a film festival and I thought, oh, I can be a film director. This is easy, and I like it. So I came to LA, didn't know a single person, and I called 100 people every day and finally got a job working for free for a company that made uh, industrial movies. And I started editing and directing How to Load a Forklift, How Not to Strain Your Back, things like that. And then from there, I started working for uh, the PBS station, and I met a director who was working on Anova. Uh, show at the PBS and filming something in Seattle and he hired me to cut, to sink the dailies this is on film and then he said if you're ever in New York come and visit so a couple weeks later I flew to New York with no reason except for to pretend like I was there shopping and I called him up and I said hi I happen to be in New York I'd never been to New York in my life hi I'm here uh, shopping I'd love to come by and uh, he said oh Nancy I remember you sure come by to our cutting room and that day their assistant quit and he hired me. When I was, got that job on The Wanderers, be, just because I happened to be in New York, uh, I mean I went to New York and pretended I happened to be there, it was editing, it was being a, an apprentice in the cutting room. So uh, Ronnie Roos was the editor and then we came to San Francisco to finish and it was just wonderful, I just loved it. I just really found it, it was great storytelling. And it was very, I also have a little bit of an art interest and I found it very creative, visually. So uh, I got, from there I got another job as an assistant and I just, I don't know, intuitively uh, enjoyed it, but also was good at it. It's a very, very funny story where um, I had been cutting films. I started very young with Mel Brooks cutting movies on film. And then I stopped after I had finished a movie called Return to Horror High, which is kind of a cult classic now. Um, and I had a baby. And I took five years off because I really wanted to be at home. And when I went back to apply for jobs, my very first job, the producer said, are you an avid editor? And I said, I love avid. I mean, I love editing. I'm a very avid, enthusiastic editor. And she said, no are you an avid editor? And I had no idea what she was talking about because I didn't even know how to use a mouse at the time. I had been folding diapers. I was not involved with editing. And I said, uh, I don't know what you mean. I did not get that job. But then um, I called a bunch of people. I said, what's this word avid? And everyone told me, it's a new software. You don't need film anymore. And I went, wow, how can I learn it? Well, um, I got another job interview quickly, and when the person said to me, Do you, are you an avid editor? It's like everyone was asking, I lied. <laughs> and I said, yes, I didn't know avid. I didn't know how to use a computer, but I got the manual, and I sat on my uh, couch, and I have it in my brain. I can just remember going through the manual and teaching myself avid. And then I got hired because I had credits before that. Um, my first day on the job, I felt like I was in front of a I was flying a, uh, a big giant airplane with no control. I had no idea. I wanted to reach in and grab the film. I was so frustrated and I was so terrible, but I worked around the clock went on the weekends, stayed very late. And I learned it very fast. Like within a couple days, it became very intuitive. I started working there um, pretty young, in my 20s, as an assistant editor on To Be or Not To Be with his wife, Anne Bancroft. And he, he said the joke to me, go, go in the back room and get the sprockets. There's a room where there's always, that we keep the sprockets, because film has holes in it, and they're called sprocket holes. And I believed him, because he's Mel Brooks, you know, and I knew nothing. And, and then they all started laughing, because I said, well, where's the room for the sprockets, and what do you do with them, you know? So they, they had a nice joke. But Mel was wonderful, Mel Brooks. I was an assistant on that show, and because I was, uh, really wanted to be an editor and I loved editing. 
I would come in on the weekends and cut on my own and I would uh, do scenes for the editor and I would do changes and I would put in sound effects and I was all, I'd get my assistant editing duties done and then always stay late and cut and one day Mel saw me in another room this is on film on a cam uh, cutting a scene and he said what are you doing I said well I'm making changes and cutting this little scene and he said well let me look at it and I, I was very scared because you know I'm the, I'm the assistant and I'm talking to Mel Brooks by myself he goes, I really, really like that. Can you do this to it? And so I was sitting there with Mel making changes. And then he had another movie and he hired me. He promoted me. He was the first person to promote me. We called bumping it up from assistant editor to full editor. And I was a full editor on his next movie because I worked all those extra hours. And um, it was great. No matter how much technology you know, no matter how well you know the Avid, which I absolutely love, um, that doesn't make an editor. You have to learn, it's almost not self-taught, but you have to learn it by doing. And so uh, that's what I was doing and I encourage the students to do that, edit as much as you can. You're gonna, until it becomes intuitive and you don't think about it, it just becomes part of your soul and your heart. And um, so practice, practice, practice. Well, I, I love, I am not a geek and I'm not a techno person, but I really love the machine and I love the actual process of working uh, the Avid or the keyboard and, but I love just visually looking through everything and creating a performance, something that's going to move the audience. I love doing montages, I love doing, uh, j just making something visually arresting and exciting. I, I, I can't actually describe it. It's, it's like any artist. Editing's an art form, and I teach that. It's an art form. It's not a craft. It's an art form. And it's very hard for any artist to explain their internal process or why they love it. It's just, they do. It's very, I mean, it's, I can edit very easily because I've done it so long. I just walk in, I edit, I kind of know how to do it. Um, when I was on SVU, I would read a script and already know how to cut it because I'd been there so long and I just know what needs to be done to express the emotions, the scene. I had no idea how to teach. I'd never taught. Um, my first class here was the first class I ever taught, so I was surprised how hard it is uh, in the preparation, but I was also surprised how wonderful it is. I love teaching. I love teaching editing because not only do I get to edit and oversee their um, productions and teach them tricks, but uh, I just love the students. They're so enthusiastic and we're all filmmakers and uh, to dis sit and discuss filmmaking and theory and story with all these uh, young people coming up is quite exciting. I don't know if it's something I, I did not know that coming in, in it to it. The easy part is and for any student or editor is the, the digital revolution has made editing accessible at home, or the studio, or in the classroom, in our labs, wherever. You can take your laptop with your Avid and cut at home, your, or view dailies at home. So, and also for someone moving up, every assistant has their own Avid. In the old days when I, Mel Brooks saw me cutting on film, I was in another room on a different chem, I couldn't be cutting the same dailies that the editor was, and it was a much more laborious. I had to be in the studio. I had to be there where this giant machine was. Now, anyone can take dailies home, practice, and um, the software is very uh, affordable and accessible. So anyone can learn and practice, practice, practice. And our students do that. They are required in the graduate school to own their own Avid software on a laptop so that they can go home and practice whenever they want. The downside of accessibility to any uh, software is that students here come in with bad habits. And we only teach Avid here because, in my opinion, and the worldwide opinion, it's the best editing software for big projects, for television shows where you need file share, where you're dealing with tons and tons of footage. You, Avid is the most facile, the best tool to use editing. And what happens, um, with a lot of students I see here, they only have accessibility to iMovie 
or uh, Final Cut Mini or whatever those are called or something that their dad bought them or that the high school provided because it was very inexpensive and it's what they learned on. They come in here with really bad editing skills and really bad um, uh, software skills and technology skills because they haven't been taught properly. And so then when I teach them Avid, their muscle memory is for Premiere. And they kind of go, oh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it because this is how we do it in Premiere. 10 million steps. I said, well, in Avid, that's two steps. You know, and they fight me like a little kid. 100% after a couple of weeks, they've learned Avid, they all come to me and they write me emails. I love Avid. I love Avid. It's so much easier. You were so right. So the, one of the downsides of having younger people only learn these other programs is that they fight it, but then they enjoy it once they learn it. And they have to learn it because, like I said, 99.9% .9 of all the film industry worldwide is cut on Avid. I just think this is a brilliant idea and I want to get it here in the school. Because, like iMovie, uh, high school students, junior high students can afford it. It's easy. I mean, it took me, what, two seconds to learn it and I'm really technically challenged. Um, and so they can learn it young and get used to the interface of Avid and they can also be impressed. Hey, I'm cutting on the software that Tom Cross used to cut Whiplash or Wonder Woman or whatever. You know, all the big names that they're um, reading about, they cut on the same software. And for kids these days, technology is so important and um, they'll find it cool. But most importantly, when they come to school or when they go to their first job, they will not have that bump of learning that they have to fight against. They'll already be familiar with the interface, with um, marking in and out, and, and all just the platform of what Avid so, um, looks like. Well, I worked on SVU for eight years, so I obviously love procedurals and the drama, the tension. The stories on SVU were incredible because they were very conflicted and they really pushed the audience to think about the grades of social injustice or justice or medicine. So that was wonderful. But I love it all. I mean, an editor should be like a studio musician. They can be play Beethoven and they can play jazz. They can play whatever is needed. And, but my favorite favorite is vampires <laughs> or ghosts or witches and I've done a lot. I've done Buffy, I've done The Vampire Diaries, I've cut uh, Witches of East End. Um, I, I recently just cut Just Add Magic. Those are four big series that all have to do with magic or vampires or something, because it's very creative with the editing. You have to create that mystery world. It's world building. It's really spooky and exciting and scary. And you get to use Boris and you get to use Sapphire and, and you, uh, it's like painting. It's not just dialogue. It's, it's very much impressionistic, like taking colors and smushing them. I rose from assistant to editor very fast, um, but I might have risen faster because I could have just gone home and come in and shown the editor, look, I took this home and can you give me more scenes to cut? And that might have been easier. I wouldn't have to wait till the editor was off the chem to cut, so I might have had a little more free time. <laughs> um, uh, also with web series, uh, maybe I would have made a web series, right? I went to film school, a lot of students now make web series. Some of them have been picked up by big companies and made into broadcast series. So maybe I would have done that because I was also a writing major, so I probably would have had more avenues. But I think I did fine. But, but students now, young people now, because it's so accessible, you don't have to be locked into a certain room at a certain location, they can do whatever they want. I mean, look at these cameras, they're so small. And you, you can cut on a laptop. You can make anything wherever you want. You're only limited, as they say, by your own imagination. I have a term that's called mine the footage, M-I-N-E, as in digging up gold. And I say, uh, don't just go from dialogue to dialogue to dialogue. That's just putting a script, words on film. Look for the little nuances. Look for the nuggets of subtext, of performance. 
that are in between the lines of dialogue. So it's impossible now. I get five days of dailies every day, right? Five hours of dailies every day. That's impossible to watch everything. So, um, and they use two to three cameras. So I cut in quad split when I watch my dailies so that I can see all three cameras or four cameras simultaneously. And you just get to know how to do that. You teach yourself. But I tell everyone, you can't possibly on a movie or a TV show watch every single frame. There's no time for that. But with the software, you can kind of scrub through um, slowly and see. And by the time I've finished cutting something, I think I've probably seen everything. So I just, you should watch it as much as you can. Um, the, the only thing that's different now digitally than on film, it's right there. You can make sub clips, you can make saved bins. Uh, if you cut up, the, cut up the film, it's not somewhere in a bin, it's right there, you always have it. Um, but you should look as much at all your footage as you can and it's very easy. It's not hard, it's just a matter of time. You can go fast, JKL, you know. The, the L button, you go fast. <laughs>